So how many staff do you have? Currently at Pine, there's 20, but not all oh, okay. of us work full time. So mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So part time, lots of part time job sharing. Or maybe more than 20 if you count the after school care people. But mm. yeah, we've got a lot of people on the ground. So each of the rooms has roughly, like the little kids' room has three full time teachers and a full time aide. But that is job, the full time aide is job shared among a couple of people. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, we've got 40 kids and three teachers. And um, the other rooms have two, two or three teachers and 30 odd kids and always have a full time aide, often job shared. Uh, there's a big learning support team, so lots of mm-hmm. people available to just help with extra things. Um, really great team of people there, and they're in mm-hmm. and out of all the spaces working with lots of kids, not just the kids who may need some additional support, but just building relationships and connections with everyone. Mm-hmm. So we do have a lot of people on the ground, which is really right nice. Yeah, 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 that's great. Yeah, I know a lot of schools would love to have that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, people are people are expensive, and because we've got experienced staff, they're really expensive. But that's right. the what that's the most important thing. If somebody said to you, you could buy more resources, or you could have another amazing teacher, both Pine and Humanitas would always go another amazing teacher, please, because mm-hmm. human resources are the real resources of our community. The humans mm-hmm. that are in them, the parents, the teachers, the young people, they're our resources. Mm-hmm. And oh, mm-hmm. you talked about resources before probably more so at Humanitas than Pine, but definitely at Pine as well. We tend to see our schools as hubs and we Mm. use the resources of the community. So we're out and about, we we go to out, like Humanitas kids, they're out and about all the time. They use the basketball courts and they use the art gallery spaces. And um, we tell some really hilarious stories about principals who are like, oh, I spent $2 million on my slab for my basketball court. And like, we went to the PCYC and used the air conditioned sprung wooden floor and it was 30 bucks. So (laughs) using the resources of the community can be a very sustainable model. Yeah. (laughs) This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Burr.